So I want to take some time in this short video to talk about the work of Josiah Royce and in particular his essay called Perception, Conception and Interpretation from his book The Problem of Christianity. I want to bring this up because I think there's been some discussion about conception and perception and it seems as if some people are treating those as if the only two cognitive processes and I wanted to address those. Uh, you know, uh, Immanuel Kant is somewhat famous for saying that perception without conception would be blind whereas conception without perception would be empty. I think that's, again, very right-minded, that we need both conception and perception, but might there be a third process? And I think that's what Royce is going to ask us here. So first what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about perception, then talk a little bit about conception, and then see if we can't move to interpretation as a third process and maybe identify some of the relevant differences there. First off, I think perception is a pretty easy one to come at. Uh, if you look right around you, all around you right now, just take a moment and you see that there is immediate sensual qualities. There's a kind of changing flux all around us. Uh, if there is something in our perceptual world, it's event, it is change, it's growth. Uh, we might say that there's things, we perceive things, but even there, uh, that's what Kant was getting at, where the perception is somehow being rendered visible by conceiving that flux and change as if it were a thing. Now, conception, I think conception is more easily understood if we go to the world of mathematics. Here we have universals, types, abstract forms, uh, characters of an abstract type. I think what Royce would try to suggest here is that we do have some notion of uh, abstract ideas that are then synthesized with our perceptions and we have some sense of the things all around us. Now, both of those, I think what we want to see are dyadic processes. And this is what Royce, this is the term that Royce would use. They're dyadic process. To say that they're dyadic process is that for each of them you only need two elements. There's a perceiver and there's a perceived. There is a conceiver and there is a conceived. There is, uh, again, if you use uh, the terminology of phenomenology, there's an intendio and intendum. Now, I, I think what Royce would want to ask us is, do all objects of our experience, do all aspects of our experience fall into these two domains? Now, if that is the case, where will you place your neighbor's mind? Is your neighbor's mind a mere perception? Is it a mere object to be perceived? Is it, can you perceive your neighbor's mind in the way that you can perceive green or red or the way that you can perceive change? Is your neighbor's mind like that? How about, is it conception? Do you just conceive your neighbor's mind? Is your neighbor's mind, for example, an abstract quality that you simply conceptualize or something like this? I th do you put your neighbor's mind in just a category and is that what it means to understand your neighbor? I think what Royce would say is that this is, when we move to questions of selves and communities, this is where we can see most clearly that we need to recognize a triadic process of interpretation that constitutes that self in the community. It's not as if there is simply perception and conception. There is a third process, at least so far as selves and communities are involved. Now, when Royce says that perception and conception are dyadic, He's trying to help distinguish those from interpretation as triadic. Now, I guess, obviously, to people who are familiar with this, this is very uh, reminiscent of Peirce's distinctions. And uh, he, he does acknowledge that he couldn't have come to these insights without Peirce, but he thinks he is doing something a little bit different than Peirce. So let me see if I can just uh, clarify this for a, a little bit more, and then we'll try to give an example, and hopefully that will make sense to some people. When I say that interpretation is a third process, and it's the process by which selves and communities are constructed, let me try to give you two quick examples. One is, when someone interprets something, there are three elements. Someone interprets something to someone else. Those are the three elements. There's a person, there's a text, and there's the person to whom that text is interpreted. Right? Even when you're alone, as you're maintaining your sense of self, there's a past, a present, and a future, and somehow the self uses the present to interpret the past self to the future self. This is how deliberate choice and decision making goes on within selves, right? Uh, now, let's take the example of animals. I think some people want to make it seem as if animals are unintelligent or stupid or something like this. This is really an error and it's an unfortunate uh, misrelation of the way 
that we are uh, we are animals and we're related to the rest of the natural world around us, but we seem not to understand how we're different than the natural world as well. Let's take that wily trout out there in the stream. There may be, in fact, a trout or a particular fish that has created a concept of fake food or of lure, and it has learned with a very visual acuity to distinguish between what will be edible food and what's going to be a hook that maybe is going to haul that fish in. Now, this is a fish that certainly has the ability to conceptualize its percepts. Do animals have the capacity to conceptualize percepts? Can they generalize from their experiences? Yes, I think they can. Uh, I think that that trout could be quite wily. It could be quite wily. But I think what's significant and different is that the fish never goes back and starts to warn the other fish about fake food. That would be a fish that has a self and a community. That would be a fish that interprets. I don't know if animals interpret or if they have communities. Now, they might, but they seem not to. It seems like humans are able to relate and change the ratio of their concepts to percepts by the act of interpretation. So as selves and communities form, the <coughs> excuse me, uh, we not only change our concepts, but we add new ones and we change the relationship of the concepts to the percepts. We change what concepts we bring to which percepts, and all this is done as we negotiate uh, our sense of self and our sense of community with others. Now, I've been trying to explain, again, uh, Josiah Royce's ideas from his book, P Problems of Christianity, and in particular the chapter there called Perception, Conception, and Interpretation. I want to just leave you here with one idea that Royce sort of concludes the paper with, where why he thinks interpretation is so relevant to the issue of self and community. What Royce says, and he's talking about when we make decisions and when we uh, need to be counseled uh, with others and then we come to do something and he writes when what has been done has been done it is the safest treasure and the heaviest burden I think this really drives at part of what we're trying to get at when we talk about interpretation the sense of time as it's laid out with a determinate order of past to present to future as we're aware of that in a self-reflective way we're we're actually interpreting that we're not just conceiving time you don't simply conceive the temporal order you interpret it and the same way with texts you don't simply conceive texts you interpret them you don't simply conceive your neighbor's mind nor do you just perceive your neighbor's mind you're always stuck interpreting your neighbor's mind I hope that this discussion of Josiah Royce has added to a discussion that I've seen going on in YouTube about perception conception and mental processes and I hope that this helps to add to what I would suggest is a kind of spiritual relation. The spiritual relation of community and selves and of the temporal order is one of interpretation and it cannot be reduced to either perception or conception or even a synthesis of the both. There is in fact a third process going on and if you'd like please go check out some Royce's work or if you want to go look at my book Selfhood and Authenticity uh, you may find more there as well. Okay, thank you.